So welcome to our last section on um, this probably pretty quick uh, journey through our liturgy. Um, it's the kind of fifth installment as we've been walking through. We've gone through the, the liturgy of welcome, the liturgy of the word, the liturgy of prayer, the liturgy of the Eucharist. Uh, and now we are in the final portion, which for your context might only be a word or two. Um, but that's okay, because it's still an important part. Um, it's the liturgy of sending. Um, again, hopefully you've enjoyed the journey so far and, and you found these videos thought-provoking and challenging and helpful. Um, please, again, please reach out if you have any questions or thoughts. Uh, but for the liturgy of sending, let me highlight um, let me highlight three points. I'm going to talk about the, the final prayer. The blessing, which again is just going to be a rearticulation of what we talked about before, um, but then all the dismissal. So, the final prayer. So, if you think about what we've done, we've now all gathered at this great altar uh, for the church. I should say what I failed to say in in the liturgy of the Eucharist. Now that I think about it, is one of the things that we need to remember. And we've said it all the way through that everything we're doing is an act of the church, right? And so even communion, when you're coming up and receive communion, you're not receiving communion as, as Joe, you know, like it is a personal thing and, and we find ourselves in it, but you're coming as a member of the church, as the body of the church, and you're coming together. The church comes, the people of God come to receive the sacrament. And so Afterwards, you know, you've gathered in this great altar call of the church to come to the table of the Lord and to partake in the offering of Christ's body and blood. And so we now acknowledge that receiving the bread and the wine, or just receiving the bread is fine, um, we've received the full and realized presence of our Lord, that, that Jesus has been present, and we have received him in some way. And so we have to realize that. And so kind of that, the prayer directly afterwards um, is, is a prayer to recognize that we have been changed. We have been transformed because receiving Christ in the Eucharist should transform us, should change us. We should not leave the altar rail in the same way that we approach the altar rail because we've had this moment with Jesus. We've had this time. Um, and so the prayers, if you think about kind of our liturgy on Sundays, the prayers following the communion articulate this, right? There are prayers um, that say, living God in the Eucharist, uh, you fill us with new hope, right? May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue its saving work among us. Like, you know, these prayers articulate that what we have received continues its work, does something to us um, and in us, and does something through us. And so um, these prayers acknowledge two things. One is we acknowledge that we have received Jesus. Uh, there's usually an articul articulation of that. Um, and it articulates that it has transformed us that it does something. You know, as an experiment, if you wanted to do this, um, take a BAS once and just, you know, turn to the the place of the, the collex, which is, I don't know, 300 and 300 to 400, as you'll you find a bunch. And just look at the prayer over the prayer after communion. Look, look at a bunch of them and see what they say. Um, you know, in the BCP, we 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 say the Lord's Prayer after the Eucharist rather than before the Eucharist, and so. Uh, but e even then, there is this: you say this Eucharistic prayer, but then you get into this time where you say, "We most heartily thank Thee, that that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries, and that we are living members of His mystical body." Right? Again, it's that same articulation. Um, 
And here we offer unto the um uh we or here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies. And so there is that articulation that this moment that we have had where we receive the bread and wine have has transformed us, has done something. We receive the Lord um, as a body of people, and it continues its work together. Again, we say that as uh, as a people, not just as individuals. And so whatever prayer you say after the Eucharist, um, we'll probably acknowledge that, and you want to recognize that. But then you're going to move into the blessing. And again, you know, you're going to take this moment um, and you're going to say a prayer, not a blessing, not a formal blessing. You can take the words of the, the formal, excuse me, you can take the words of the formal blessing. Um, may the blessing of, you know, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Um, you're not going to say it like that because that's just rattling it off. But you can change that to a prayer. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I pray that the blessing of God Almighty, right? You can change it into a prayer um, and you really want to enter into it. Now, let me just say that this moment after the Eucharist, the final prayer and what is, is the articulation of a prayer of blessing. Let's put it like that way. Um, it is important, right? There are people who need to hear that, who need to hear this articulation of God's favor, of God's peace, and God's presence. And so, as we've always said, you don't rush through it, right? It is so important, and it begins to close what we've done in the worship. So think of this trajectory that we've gone through. We've been called and invited to gather into the place for the purpose of drawing closer to God, um, to hear God's voice, to reflect on it, to pray through it, to enter into this wonderful communion through the sacrament. Um, and now we are beginning to, to recognize that the power of God in us that can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine begins to move us outside the comfortable boundaries of our church communities and into the world uh, to be the agents of God's love, to be the agents of God's healing, to be the agents of reconciliation, um, and to do the work. You know, as I said, I think previously, we receive the body of Christ as a church. We receive the body of Christ so that we can become the body of Christ, um, and go out into the world. And that's where the dismissal comes in. And so let me just close with a, a, a brief word on the dismissal. Um, the dismissal does what it says it does. It dismisses everybody. Um, and it's a liturgical act, right? It's not just a fancy way to say that everything's done, um, right? It is. It is this declaration that the church is sent into the world. Um, and, you know, there's different ways that people say this. Um, some people say, um, uh, at, on, on the live, somebody said, you know, that their dismissal is, the you know, our worship has ended, our service begins, or something like that. Let's go forth in peace in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, let us bless the Lord. Um, go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Whatever it is, right? But there is usually in the dismissal an acknowledgement and a call to go, <laughs> you know, to, um, and again, it's, so it's not just a close. It is ascending, ascending forth, a commissioning, let's say. Um, and so whatever words you use, here's my advice. Uh, whatever words you use, keep it short and sweet. Uh, and there's always going to be a response to it, right? There's always going to be um, thanks be to God. And if you're not in Lent, hallelujah. Um, can I just say, can our hallelujahs just be enthusiastic? Like, can, you know, because this is a huge thing. Hallelujah. We've been, you know, we've been transformed in Christ. We're going out in the power of Christ. 
God is going to do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine in this world. Hallelujah. Right. And so we get sent out. And so what, but whatever phrases you use, keep it short and sweet so that people know when they can enter into that, that response. Uh, I've been in some churches where, um, where the lay reader, worship assistant, lay minister, whatever you call them, where they did the dismissal and where they thought that the point of the dismissal was to sum up um, the service and the sermon. And so it always became kind of a rambling phrase. Let us go now in God's loving peace to enter into the mission field of the world and to clear the healing presence of our Redeemer. And it, like, and people just got so lost with what exactly is going on. What you know that nobody really entered into that that dismissal because again the dismissal is not something that you say alone. It is something that the church gathers into and the church participates into as one body as a people, and so you want to allow them to enter into that and invite them into that with this clear and um, and easy recognition that now is your time to respond. And so I'm just a big fan of go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Um, uh, a deacon I worked with always said, um, go forth into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Whatever it is. Um, but it's just something which is short and sweet. You know, it's not any longer than you can put on a t-shirt. Um, and you are you are inviting people to respond into that moment of um, thanks be to God, right? Thanks be to God that we can go in the power of Christ. Thanks be to God that we have been redeemed, that we have been, that we have met our Lord. Thanks be to God that God will go with us as we enter into this world and to do the work for which we are called. So, um, let me end there. And I know that these videos have been probably long and, and, and drawn out. Um, and thank you for, uh, following along and uh, the the beauty of it being on online is you know you can kind of go back and refer to it as you need but um, I am only an email or a phone call away so the my phone number here at the cathedral is 250-372-3912 extension 205 or you can send me an email at dean spc at shaw.ca uh, and if you have any questions or thoughts about your own particular work as a lay minister of word and sacrament um, please give me a call because i would love to know how i can support you in your ministry thank you for your work and god bless you as you go and do the work for which you were called all right